Hi guys, today I'll be recreating this sweetheart bustier dress with mesh detail by purple Nigerian designer Vicky James. I recently made this so I thought to like film a video for you guys. If you want to see how I made it, please stick around. So as usual, I'm starting off with my basic bodies block from Natalie Prey. The tutorial on how to draft this will be linked in the description. I'm going to turn this basic block into a dress block by extending the lines from the hip to the bottom of the paper. So basically I'm going to measure the hip on the back pattern and extend that same measurement to the bottom part of the paper. The same thing as the front and then I connect. Next I'm going to measure the full length of this pattern and deduct this measurement from my actual length measurement. So whatever is left is what I'll add to the bottom when I'm cutting out on the fabric. So in this case, I've extended the length with 14 inches. On the side front from the waistline, I'm going to measure 19 inches for the knee level. And I'm just going to extend that line also to the center front. Also the same at the back, and then I connect. So here I'm just going to go ahead and label the lines. Next I'm going to mark one inch on the side of the front on the knee level and on the side of the back and one and a quarter inch on the center back. Next I'm going to connect those points. Now this is just to make it a little fitted around the knee area. Next, I'm going to mark the length of the upper part of the dress, which has the print detail. Now, this was 34 inches from the neck point. Next, I'm going to connect that and also extend it to the back. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and label. So, the top part is the print, which is the Ankara fabric, and then the bottom part is the mesh. Next, I'm going to cut through. Then I'm just going to make sure I label it the side front, know what part is the side, know what part is the center back so you don't mix it up when cutting. Moving on to the bodice part of the design, I'm going to measure the back neck depth, which in this case I used 9 inches. Measuring from the neck point, I'm going to mark the shoulder length 5 inches. Next, I'm going to lower the armhole with half an inch. Then I'm going to connect those new points. And usually this is how I get rid of the shoulder that's on the back part of the pattern. To draw the built up neck, I'm going to mark out half inch on the shoulder line and extend it from that point with one inch. Next I'm going to go on the center back line also and mark it out with half an inch. So I'm just going to blend that point on the shoulder line down. And then mark one inch from the CB upward and then connect. Now marking the built up neck on the CB this way gives it a little ease around the neck area. Now usually if you're working with a fabric that is stretchy, you won't need to add this ease. You could just extend it straight from the CB line. Next I'm going to measure four and a half inch from the shoulder point along the armhole to get the back neckline. So the top part is going to be mesh and then the bottom part will be the print or the Ankara fabric. Now moving to the front part of the bodies, I'm just going to go ahead and cross check the shoulder measurement along the shoulder line and also bring down the armhole with about half an inch. To mark the built up neck for the front, I'm going to basically do the same thing as I did at the back. I'm going to move it back with half an inch on the shoulder line, raise it up with one inch, bring it out on the CF line with half an inch, and then also raise it from the base of the neck upward with one inch. And then I'm just going to connect these points. So I realized that after I marked the ease on the CF and on the CB of the built-up neck, 
I discovered that the fabric had way more stretch to it so I decided to just take that little ease out so basically I'm just marking the half inch um, that I that I brought it out with and just marking it out so I'm just going to cut straight on the CF and straight on the CB but still do bear in mind that if you're working with a fabric that is not stretchy you might want to consider adding the ease to it next I'm going to mark my underbust length which was 14 inches from the neck point now from that point I'm just going to rule a short line across and then mark two seam on both sides of the dot for the underbust shaping next I'm just going to connect from that new point down to the waist dot now I'm going to mark point X on the true bust line just right in the middle of the shoulder dot and the waist dot next I'm going to use my French curve to just connect those points again So here I'm just going to separate the pattern cutting through the waistline and also cut it out through the outline. Now to draw the neckline of the bust here, I'm going to measure from the base of the neck 7 inches as the neck depth. Now from that point, I'm going to go ahead and draw my sweetheart shaped neckline. So because we're having the mesh over the bust and not above the bust as, as a yoke would be, I'm going to go ahead and trace out the bustier part of the pattern on a separate piece of paper so that I have the, the one on the white part for the mesh and then the one on the brown paper will be the bustier. So I'll just go ahead and mark the trace part out. Now for this bustier, mind you, I didn't create any extra dots above the chest area and that's mostly because the mesh is going to lay over the bust so you don't want to shape it so that it doesn't match up when you're trying to attach it back now for the skirt part of the dress i traced on four because it has an asymmetric pleated detail which goes on just one side of the skirt so before i cut through the pattern i'm just going to go ahead and cut the lining So now I'm just going to lay my pattern out. Next I'm going to mark 2 inch from the top of the waist and then after that another 2 inch. Now this is the spacing between each pleat. Next I'm going to connect the second mark passing through the first dot all the way to the other side of the skirt. Then I'm going to close that dot. Next I'm just going to slash through but not cut it out entirely like so next I'm going to connect the first point to the second dot and also do the same close the dot and then slash through just to the point of that dot now if you want more pleats on the first slash you can definitely go ahead and slash it all the way to the side as we did the first one that way you're able to spread you know to add as much um, allowance in there for the pleat as possible now for the mesh part of the pattern i'm going to cut it under the bust so what i'll do is i'll just make a mark around on the bust and then cut it out Next, because this fabric is so stretchy, I'm going to ease out some of the dots. So I don't want my dots to be as wide because it already has a little bit of stretch to it. So I'm going to take the underbust um, measurement that I did, which is 2cm both ways. That's like 4cm. I'm going to take that 4cm and ease it out on the side of the pattern. So the only dots that will be left on the mesh will be the shoulder dot, which you can see right in the middle. Now because of the amount of stretch on the mesh, I decided to just take at least 1cm on the chest area of the bustier just to give it a little bit of tightness around there because the fabric stretches. But if you have a fabric that is going over the bust that don't stretch, please do not 
shape or add a dot to the chest on your bustier. So here I'm just cutting out the front part of the skirt. Now this particular pattern didn't have a seam allowance included so I'm just going to go ahead and add one inch on the sides, uh, half inch on the waistline and then about one inch on the hem. Well, I think one and a half inch on the hem. Now I'm going to close my pleats and then just make my notches so I know exactly how the pleat folds over. So here is what it looks like. I'm going to show you from the back. So that's it. Now if you want the pleats bigger or more defined, just spread the slashes wider apart. That way you get more room for bigger pleats. So here I'm just going to cut out the back pattern, the front pattern, the lining, the interfacing and everything. So this is the back part of the mesh. So here I'm just going to add my zip allowance on the CB and then half inch all around except on the neckline because it's going to be left unfinished. I'm going to repeat the same on the front part as well. Now this way you can clearly see the size of the dots that was left on the front. So this is how the mesh is going to lay over the bust. It's just going to sit right under the bust like so. Next, I'm going to pin out all my pieces together and then just head over to the sewing machine to join each of these pieces. I'm going to use half inch as my seam allowance. So starting with the front, I'm just going to go ahead and join the bust curve using half an inch. Repeat the same on the lining. Next, I'm going to sew out the dots on the back pieces with the fabric and that of the lining. Next, I'm going to sew out the dots of the skirt part as well with the lining. So here the dot is done. So I've went ahead to add a layer of interfacing on the waist and on the zip allowance. Now I'm going to pin the top part to the skirt part. Same with the lining. So here's how the posture is looking after giving it a good press. Next, I'm going to place my lining over it in, and then sew it half an inch around the neckline. And once sewn, I'm just going to trim off about a quarter inch off of the seam allowance on the neckline, and then I'll go ahead and do a top stitch. Next, I'm going to join the back pieces. The same with the lining. So here's the bust gear once again. Now it's all pressed. I've pressed out the neckline area. Make sure all my seams are laying. And now I'm going to pin it here on this dress form so that I'm able to do the pleated detail that goes over the bust. Before I get to that, I'm just going to sew all the dots on the mesh first and then come back.
Now I'm going to join the back part to the front part around the shoulder with half an inch. So here my mesh is all joined. Next I'm going to attach the mesh to the underbust just using a hand stitch. So here I'm just using my needle and tray just to hold it in place. Next I'm going to cut a wide piece of fabric on a bias grain. Now this is the fabric I'm going to use as the to get the pleated detail around the bust. Now it doesn't have any specific measurement. I just made it as wide as possible based on the amount of ruching or pleats that I wanted. So here I'm just basically draping um, the bias fabric over the bust and on the waistline too but also you want to make sure you have some pleats that are deep because that's where your frills will sit in at the end now once i'm done i'm just going to go ahead and trim out the excess fabric on all sides And once that is trimmed out, I'll just go ahead and do a stitch around just to hold it in place. Next, I'm going to attach the back part of the dress to the mesh part. So here I'm just going to pin the mesh to the back and then lay the lining over it and sew it out with half an inch. And then I'm going to do a top stitch. So here's how it's looking so far with the back part attached to the front part. Next I'm going to attach the bottom of the skirt to the waistline of the front. I'm just going to notch my center front of the front and of the bottom part as well so they can match up. Next I'm going to pin in place. And also join that with half an inch allowance. So I've gone ahead to do this off camera. I actually forgot to record that part. Next, I'm going to join the back piece and the front piece side by side, joining that with one inch seam allowance. Usually I would finish the side by joining the fabric to fabric and lining to lining but this client was from out of state so I did it this way so it would be easier to make amendments if it was necessary. Now the sewing of this part was also done off camera. Basically just join it down with one inch seam allowance. I also cut my sleeve out so I'm just going to join with um, about one inch. And next, I just attached it to the armhole using half an inch. Now for this design, one, one part of the sleeve was a long sleeve and the other side was a short sleeve. So just take note. I didn't show that part, but just take note. Now once I attached both sleeves, I just went ahead to also cut the bottom part off camera. And basically, I just cut it like the same way you would cut a mermaid skirt or a fishtail skirt. So next, I join the pieces together and also stitch that down with half an inch. Now I waited to attach it to the bottom until she had her first fitting. 
And here's how it looked. It just sat right on her, perfect. There was no need of any kind of alteration whatsoever. Now once I was sure of the fit, I went ahead to attach the mesh part to the bottom of the dress. Now basically I just pinned it in place. Now to finish the bottom, I cut a piece of fabric that was the same width as the bottom of the skirt, like maybe 2 inch extra and 4 inch in width. So what I did was just iron it on fold so it's like 2 inch after folding. So next I just placed that around the bottom and then stitched it down with half an inch and basically just used my hem, my hem gum to just finally seal it in. So this is what the hem part looks like all finished with the hem gum everything attached. Now the final part of the dress is to do the ruffles. So this ruffles is going to be asymmetric because it goes slightly from the front of the bust to around the arm. So I cut my fabric on a square which was 28 by 28 inches. Now you can cut it based on the width of the frills that you're trying to achieve. So for this one I wanted it to start at about two and a half inch and end to about 10 inches. Now because I wanted to use the lining as the fabric, I didn't want to do like an extra lining, I cut four pieces. So two would be the actual fabric and I'll use two as the lining. Next I'm going to mark the center point of the fabric. Next I'm going to use a circular object to start the base of the frills. Now note, the size of the circular object you use determines how loose or how close your, your creases is going to be on the frills or ruffles. So I use like a medium sized um, circular object so that I won't have too many creases if you get what I mean. Next I'm going to pick a point from one of the four quarters of the circle. And then from that point is where I'll now start drawing my curve. So first I'm just going to make a slight curve. And then from that curve, I'll keep drawing, increasing with like half inch as I go. So I'll keep going around, increasing until I get to a point where I've come to like the end of the fabric where I can't go anymore and then I can now cross check the measurement to see if it's the length of the frills that I want. So you can definitely stop at intervals to check the measurements just to make sure you have the right amount of frills that you need. So this was the point where I came to the end of my fabric because I couldn't get that same width going forward. So to check the length of the frills that I wanted, I started measuring from the inner curve all around. I wanted about 30 something, about 32 inches. So it was exactly what I needed. So I didn't need to go any further or reduce. So to cut this out, you're going to start from the outer edge, that's the last part which you did. And then just carefully follow the curve, like so. Now once you've cut it down to the center, you can now finish by continuing from the outer edge. So here is it after. Next I'm going to cut um, two layers of crinoline just to give it a little bit of structure. Also at the outer corners, at the outer curve, I added a horse hair braid to it too, also for more structure. Now I did this off camera, I sewed it out, ironed it and This is it, all done. I faced it out, added the crinoline and the horsehair braids to the outer edge. 
so the frills is done the next thing to do is just drape it right on the the bust part of the dress and then just finish it up so yeah this was the last part this took a while to you know really set in but you know you just play around with it until you get the desired um, structure or the desired design so guys that's it this is the final look how did i do guys <laughs> is this a case of what i ordered versus what i got was it good was it bad let me know in the comment guys thank you so much for watching again and i hope you enjoyed watching this video please subscribe if you haven't give the video a thumbs up and i hope to see you in my next tutorial bye guys